Um, so, hi everyone, I'm Anastasia van Gever and I work as a conservator in the Natural History Museum of Denmark uh, for the last two years. Uh, I work with Bethany Palumbo and the rest of the conservation team on the new museum building projects in Copenhagen. And today I will be talking about the lessons we learned from the deinstallation of dioramas as part of that large project. Um, so here is some information about that uh, project to give you a bit of context. Um, so the Natural History Museum of Denmark is currently building a new museum building underground. Um, yeah, so this is the new museum uh, that you can see there, and it's underground. Uh, and that is in the city center of Copenhagen in the Botanical Garden. So that's the Botanical Garden and the Greenhouse. Um, this new site will open in a few years with seven diverse galleries, taking the visitors through different parts of the world with the Arctic and Denmark, uh, the rainforest and the universe. There will also be a new glass dome, which will be focused on ocean life. And that's what you can see here. Um, the museum collections contain nearly 14 million natural history specimens and over 3000 objects need to be conserved for this new building. The new galleries are mostly designed around specimens we already have, but there will also be some new acquisitions. Um, and our job in conservation is to get them all documented, conserved, and ready to be moved and installed at the new site. Uh, in conjunction to this new building project, uh, the Zoological Museum that you can see here uh, closed uh, to visitors in 2022. And since we are moving out of that building, uh, the University of Copenhagen wants it back and it needs to be emptied completely within the next 10 to 15 years. But the conservation lab and many of the collections are currently based in this building. And since the museum closed to visitors, the conservation team has started deinstalling the exhibition space. Um, the zoological museum contains many habitat dioramas and several of the taxidermy specimens from these dioramas were chosen for the new galleries. Um, so we had a talk earlier from Brighton with Habitat Dioramas, but um, the ones we have at the Zoological Museum are a slightly larger scale with quite large mammals usually. Um, and so just to describe the various elements of an Habitat Diorama, um, so they are a traditional way of displaying specimens with lifelike animals and realistic backgrounds and materials. Um, so the specimens are displayed in a realistic, realistic way, interacting with each other and their environment. Dioramas have a special place in the history of collections and museums. They are not just about the specimens, they are also very much about the artistry, uh, the artistry to make models and fake planes and background paintings. Um, and as an example, this is the Okapi diorama from the Zoological Museum. Uh, and so you can see there are several taxidermy specimens. So there's, uh, two okapis, there's also a pangolin hidden somewhere around here, uh, there are several birds, um, insects, and you can see the background paintings, um, and obviously artificial plants. Um, and so as I was saying, the Zoological Museum contains several of those large-scale habitat dioramas. Um, they feature in the pole to pole exhibition and they were built over a 30 year period. And the latest one is the Walrus Diorama and that was completed in 1994. And last June, six of these dioramas were opened for the first time in decades. Um, there was three dioramas of tropical forests. So you can see here the Sumatran rhino, the Okapis and the orangutans. There was also two dioramas of Arctic landscapes with the walruses, and the musk oxen, and there was one diorama of a bog with the cranes. Um, these specimens will be displayed in the new museum building, and the rest of specimens will go back to collections in the future. Um, so now about our deinstallation plan. Um, because dioramas are so complex, and as I was saying, it's not just about the uh, taxidermy specimens, it's also very much about everything else. Uh, we wanted to document every detail before deinstalling them. We wanted to understand the crafting process and the techniques involved, as well as create a record before removing anything. We decided to use a combination of conservation best practice with photography, visual assessments, and a condition report template we created specifically for dioramas, as well as opportunities that were made possible for our museum colleagues, um, and that included 3D scanning and all interviews with the original makers of the dioramas. 
the goal was to safely retrieve the specific specimens needed for display, but also to make a record of this diorama's condition, builds, and material. So the plan you can see here um, was first to research the museum archives to get as much information as we could about the dioramas. Um, then to access the dioramas, we needed a special uh, glass lifting machine because there are such large panels, it couldn't be done by hand. Um, and that had to be done by museum technician specifically trained to use that machine. Once the dioramas were accessible, the digital team would start the 3D scanning. Um, and the conservators would then start their own documentation. The original makers of the diorama would be interviewed. And during the three weeks that we had allocated for um, documentation, the museum technician had to build bespoke pins for each uh, specimen that had to be removed. Um, and that was because the measurements could only be given to him after the dioramas were accessible. Uh, then the specimens needed for exhibition would be removed and placed on their plinth. The glass panels would be put back on and we could start the conservation of specimens. Um, so once the glass windows were removed, the digital team successfully uh, started 3D scanning. Uh, so here you can see the result for the wireless diorama. Um, they used a combination of the Matterhorn Pro 3 camera and the Trimble X7 scanner. Um, I didn't use those, so I have no idea to manage that, but I love the results. Um, so using this 3D scanning technique provided accurate documentation of the diorama for future reference. So you can see here we got a lot of detail um, yeah. of both the specimen and the habitat. Um, one issue of 3D scanning is that it is a really slow process and uh, the digital team ran out of time. So we 3D scan, well, they 3D scan every diorama except the orangutans. Um, another issue is that 3D scanning doesn't capture everything. Um, you might be able to see sometimes when I'm moving around on the screen, some areas are not captured. Um, but because the digital team 3D scans the dioramas before uh, we did our own documentation, we knew what to focus on and what to record in more details with our own photos um, and reports. Uh, and so that's what I'm on now, uh, the conservation team condition assessment reports. So uh, that was done by two other conservators and myself. Um, we use digital photography as well as the condition report template you can partially see here on the left. Um, we designed this template specifically for assessment of diorama as they are so complex and we really wanted to make sure we captured everything. Um, with a record of all the relevant information and the old installations that included lights, the different access, um, because some dioramas were accessible only through the windows, but some were accessible through back doors. Um, we, for example, made sure to record details about the light systems because they play a pivotal role in giving the atmosphere of a diorama, uh, and that was not necessarily recorded by the 3D scanning. And on the right, you can see an example of a diorama diagram we created as part of our assessment. And that was um, because it's so complex and overwhelming. If you just have a photo and things are not really uh, detailed, we found it was easier to have things in black and white and a give number to each uh, main group of trees, a group of plants, and individual um, taxidermy specimens. And additionally, we carried out all interviews with the original diorama makers, um, and that really added an historical context to our understanding of these exhibits. Meeting the people who created the dioramas provided valuable insight and added details about the constructions and materials that we would not have known otherwise, even from researching the archives. The interviews were also carried out after we did the assessment of dioramas and the condition reports, so we could ask the makers um, any questions we had and um, figure out certain uncertainties. Uh, the deinstallation process. Uh, so when documentation was complete, we planned out to remove each specimen carefully. The aim was to avoid causing more damage than necessary, even though obviously we are taking them apart. Um, we figured out the best place to enter and move within the diorama and identified which materials needed to be taken out first to reach the specimen. And that was particularly an issue in the dense forest diorama. This careful planning and execution were crucial, but despite our best planning, uh, and efforts, we still face many challenges, and that's what I want to discuss with you now. Um, to start with, a big challenge was the time constraint. For example, the glass windows could only be removed and placed back on certain dates due to the availability of the glass lifting machine and of the staff trained to use it. 
the digital team who organized 3D scanning um, was only available on certain dates, and our technician Thomas only works part time and only had three weeks to build the plane. We also had to deal with the other challenges you can see here, and I'll give you a specific example of each as we walk through the dioramas. Uh, a very practical challenge was the weight and size of specimen, which made the removal really demanding. Uh, the heaviest specimen was the rhino, surprisingly. Maybe we could have uh, expected that it would be really heavy, but we didn't. Um, <laughs> and it was so heavy, it required an engine hoist in addition to the whole conservation team. We should have known better, but it was difficult to assess, uh, especially because each taxidermy specimen was created at a different time by a different maker, and we didn't know uh, what materials were used for the mannequins. Um, each specimen was also mounted in a different way with concealed mounting system hidden by the specimen and the habitat. Um, the rhino was bolted down to a wooden structure hidden under the habitat floor, and we had to sew and cut a lot of it to be able to access and loosen the nuts and bolts securing the specimen. Next, the lack of space within the dioramas and broader exhibition space was another challenge. Maneuvering large and heavy specimen was difficult, even more so in the limited space of the diorama, while trying to avoid damaging the specimen and material. Uh, the orangutan was particularly complex to deinstall because the mount needed to be moved with the habitat tree that you can see um, there. Uh, we discussed the removal of specimens in advance, uh, but looking back, we underestimated just how cumbersome the specimens would be and how difficult the space would be to navigate. And additionally, one of the main challenges with this project and the new museum project as a whole is that plans are constantly evolving. So there's changes to future displays, changes to budget, changes to object list, to case dimensions, etc. And everyone probably who has worked on a large museum project can say the same, but it can be really difficult because you need to stay super flexible. Information is not always clear about what is needed for the new display. And with your round turn, we didn't know how much should be taken alongside the specimen itself. Would the tree be enough? Did we need all the branches? Did we need extra vines, all the durian fruits? Um, so we did what we could and provided alternative options when possible. Another challenge, uh, just like the talk we, we heard, is that once we got up close to the specimen, we realized they were in worse conditions than originally expected. And most of the condition issues were not visible inside the dioramas because of the low lightning to create atmosphere. Um, but in such conditions, the specimens were not suitable for display in the new museum building, where there will be much better lighting. Uh, and these large, large taxidermy mounts will be highlight of their new displays. So it was critical they were accurate and well preserved. This meant, firstly, that taking them out of their dioramas was riskier, as some parts were unstable. And it also meant that the conservation treatment would be much longer and more complex and planned. Uh, but the conservation treatment were a success, as you can see here, as uh, the OKP restored by my colleague Nicole Feldman. And so reflecting on this experience, uh, these challenges really tested our team communication, adaptability, and problem-solving skills. Through these experiences, we learned valuable lessons that will inform our approach to similar projects. We have developed a clearer understanding of best practice for dioramat installation. The three main lessons we learned from this project are first that you should collaborate and integrate new techniques when possible. By collaborating with the digital team and using different techniques such as 3D scanning and oral interviews, we enhanced our documentation standards for the benefit of both the conservation team and the collection team. Collaboration with the archivist also meant that some of the diorama elements such as background paintings will be incorporated into the museum archives. You also need to know your limits. Um, so reflecting back on the Rhino, uh, it can be quicker and safer to hire professionals with experience with similar project to work alongside your own conservation team. Uh, we did not hire a specialist moving team when we did install the specimen, but we did later on when it came to moving them downstairs. It is important as well to find the balance between planning and staying flexible. We had planned for the whole project, but unexpected issues still arose, and we had to stay open-minded and try to adapt quickly. We accepted that certain things were not done, such as the 3D scanning of the orangutans, and we also accepted that some things took longer, like the conservation treatment. Um, and as we look forward, these lessons will inform our approach for future diorama conservation at the NHMD, because there are still many dioramas to be deinstalled. An upcoming challenge will be the preservation of the crane diorama that you see here. It was documented this summer uh, like the other dioramas, but it was not deinstalled yet because the challenges 
um, we need to remove and install the old diorama, both the specimens and all the habitat materials to the new museum building. Um, the resin you can see here to indicate water has never fully set for the last 30 years. Um, it is still really sticky and the birds are stuck in it. So <laughs> if anyone has advice uh, and experience, um, that would be really welcome because that is a bit of a challenge. Um, and yeah, ultimately, really excited to share this with you. And in the next few years, you will be able to see the new museum in Copenhagen. <laughs> so thank you very much. Sorry. Does anybody have any questions? Take the microphone. I do not very Yes. Um. So I think for now it's only internally. Um. So it's accessible to us, the collection team, digital team, conservation team. I expect long term the digital team has planned to publish them because the diorama as well super popular with visitors. Um, and I think that's something they want to preserve. Sorry, the question there was with what are the 3D scans available or to be available? Uh, do we have another question? Oh, Jack, do you want a couple of them shout? <laughs> I'll shout. Okay. Um, thank you. What can you manage to do with anything all around? Yeah. Um, so the question is about the plans for the foreground materials. Um, it is a bit unclear. <laughs> and so that's why we wanted to make sure we um, save them in case they, have, they are to be reused. So for the orangutan, for example, the durian fruit might be reused and so some of the branches and vines might be reused in addition to the tree. So we made sure to deinstall them, document them, um, and have them accessible if they are needed in the future. Um, some materials will be saved by the archivist, um, mostly some of the background paintings, which are handmade paintings, and some materials I really don't know. I don't know if they will be disposed of or if they will be kept. Um, a bit like in Oxford, there is in Copenhagen a big plan for a storage facility um, outside of the city centre, and when that is built, I guess, depending on size and availability, they might keep more or less of the material but most of the diorama specimens and materials are not accessioned. They are technically exhibition material and not collection. So I assume for budget reason, some things might not be kept, which is why the documentation was so important. <laughs>